Welcome into This Week in UNC Baseball with head coach Scott Forbes. I'm Tommy Ashley. That's Matt Clementson, of course, the man in the middle, Scott Forbes. Let's get right into it, Scott. Got a sweep against Stony Brook. I think the, the biggest thing for me watching is you're starting pitching really stepped up this weekend. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it started all the way back with VCU. Um, you know, it's hard to win five games in a week, so I'm proud of our guys. Uh, every game wasn't flawless, but we got good pitching. You know, Percival was the only one where we didn't nap through Tuesday, Sunday. And looking back on it, I could have left Percival in, I think. Um, but for those three guys to go, you know, Bo, uh, Beauvair, Carlson, Beauvair, and Nap, they all pitched great. And that's where it starts, right? Starting pitching and starting to figure out our bullpen a little bit. So I was, I was pleased with the weekend. I knew Stony Brook, their record is extremely misleading. Um, they're a veteran position player group. They had been scoring. They had just been giving up runs. So I thought they would score looking at their lineup. Um, and I think they will be a very competitive team in the, in the CAA because they're in that conference now. And I knew they wouldn't make many errors and stuff like that. So I thought it was good baseball all week. Let me ask you about Carlson, uh, seven, seven and a third on Friday night. What do you think his – especially early in the season, what do you think his limit is? Like, how, how deep can he go? How many pitches can he throw that you'd be comfortable with? Man, that's a great question. I'm not huge on the – I mean, obviously you're not going to 140 or 150. But with six days, um, I think pitch count is overrated from the standpoint of how you get to that pitch count. And are you bringing a guy back off two or three days rest when he does throw 110 pitches? Six days, you know – you do research in baseball, the starters, you know, they, they went a lot more than that before they kept pitch counts and they were on four days rest. So I think with Carlson now that he's healthy, his body's in better shape, he's older. Um, you know, if he if he had a chance to throw a complete game, get into that 110, max 120 range, you wanna you wanna wait and do that a little bit later. But you know, I'm a little bit old school from the standpoint of, you know, I was talking to Gallon about it too. The more strikes you throw more innings you're going to throw um, and the less pitches you can throw. So I'd rather him have more innings and, and keep that pitch count down. Uh, but I think he's capable of throwing 100 every time he goes out there. So, Coach, what did you see in Nap, obviously on Tuesday and then coming back on Sunday that, that made him so effective to uh, earn that Sunday that Sunday role? In Nap, it was just a case of not having a good preseason. I mean, we saw it in the fall. We thought he was a weekend starter. He just didn't pitch great in the preseason, and uh, we felt like it'd be better to start him midweek, get his maybe get his confidence back. But um, I thought in my mind, this guy's got weekend starter written all over him. His off speed is still getting better and better, but he's got good command of that fastball. Um, and you want, you know, in a weekend starter, especially Sunday starter, you want a guy that you know the other team's going to have to beat, and you have to beat Nap. He's not going to walk you too often. Um, and I do feel like he – I mean, he's going to push those other guys because he's got Friday night stuff. You guys have seen his stuff. Um, you know, he's a big old boy. So, you know, he can be up to 95, and then he holds his velocity above 90 the whole time. So, just his command and his presence, and he deserved it. And I'm glad, you know, for our team that he's pitched so well. Um, also, we talk about the bullpen role shaking up. Can you give a scouting report on Matthew Mathis and then talk about Poston's uh, learning a slider on the fly? Yeah, hard uh, hard name to pronounce, isn't it? Yeah, Mat Matthias, Matthias. I just we just call him Maddie. Um, <laughs> you know, Maddie. It goes all the way back. I mean, he's always had ice water in his veins. Um, you know, he won the Little League World Series in Williamsport, if I'm correct, pitching for that team. Uh, he had a great career at D.H. Connolly. He played on a very good travel team in the Canes. And he was there, anything and everything guy. And he's a worker. Um, and I've always thought this kid, man, he's got closure written all over him. We just uh, – his command wasn't great. Again, kind of like Nap. It wasn't terrible in the preseason, so we went with some strikes like we talked about earlier. Um, but, you know, he is from Greenville, North Carolina, so – um, you know, I'm sure he didn't like the fact that he didn't throw against East Carolina. I'm sure he circled that makeup day. But he's, uh, you know, he's a fastball cutter and a curveball. You know, he's also got a change. But the cutter is a new pitch that he added in the preseason, and that's a big pitch for him because it's hard to square him up. Um, Coach Gaines did a good job with him. 
he's a competitor and he's the type of guy early, you know, if you're a fan, you're going to, you got to deal with the fact and a coach that he's going to walk you, but he can strike you out. And if guys can do that, I'm okay with it. Um, I still prefer those walks not to happen, but his walks are usually three, two as well. Um, so I'm happy to see him get out there and have some success as well. Staying there on the bullpen, talking about some success, Dalton Pence had a, a good inning yesterday mm -hmm. or Sunday against Stony Brook. Uh, I mean, that is – did the light switch come on a little bit for him or, or what did you see there? Because you've talked about him all season and all preseason about how he was – he could be one of those closer guys too. He could, and he also could be a starter. I mean, that's the thing Dalton's only started. You know, he started in high school. He, he missed last year with an injury and he pitched – um, you know, he's still kind of like Carlson was last year. He's still kind of finding his way. He had the same surgery, the, the UCL bracing. So he was like 93, 95 at the end of the fall, and his velo still hasn't jumped back to that. Um, and his off speed is okay. He can locate it, but it's not electric. Uh, so with him, you know, right now just being 90, 91, we feel like it's going to be better for him to be a, a middle-type reliever, a matchup-type reliever. And he could also start him if we chose to. Um but I really thought, you know, the bad outing against against East Carolina, that's, you know, that's not an easy outing, an easy atmosphere. You learn from that. I thought he threw much, much better Sunday here against East Carolina. And again, yesterday, I thought his command was good. So he'll be a guy that you're going to see a lot of. But it's been ironic, you know, besides East Carolina, we face predominantly right-handed hitters. Um, not that you're not going to throw lefties against right-handed hitters, but the matchup just haven't been great. But we need to get innings out of Dalton for sure. Looking at, you mentioned midweek, you got Western and Penn State this week. Naps moved to the Sunday starter, so that's opened up one of those starting mm -hmm. spots there. What do you see this week? Yeah, man, nothing like those five games, huh? Ten games <laughs> in the next 14 days. But we can't, like, again, you know, we can't play. They don't let us play the weekend of exams. We're one of the only three teams, I think, in our league. They can't do that. So the only way to get our 56 in is to play two midweeks, and we like to do it early. Um, so we can, you know, at the back stretch, go with that four-man rotation. We're going to throw Percival tomorrow, get him back out there, and then we're going to go back with Will Sandy because he's been one of our best guys as well. We want to get him out there, and he's one of our leaders, and he's looked good. I thought he came in and looked good in his two pitches he threw as a reliever. But we saw Will have a great fall. We saw him have a great preseason, um, and I think he can do anything for us. So it will be a big start for him. Penn State's good. Watched him against Miami. Um, early in the season, so it'll be a good a good test for Will. Yeah. Well, this week the, uh, the the Diamond Heels hit 17 home runs, according to what I tally. Your Louisville Slugger rep has to be excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you talk about the can you talk about the, the power that the Diamond Heels have been showing? Yeah, I mean they've been big home runs too. You know, we talk about all all, all home run. We don't try to hit home runs here, mm -hmm. uh, but we have strong kids that are powerful. You know, we're trying to hit line drives, and those will turn into home runs. Coach Bruce Bickey has, you know, done a great job with our guys that have increased their power numbers like a frick. Vanderbreak is new, but he's gotten stronger here. And our strength coach, Greg Gass, he's been the same strength coach since we walked in the door in 1999. If you look at our guys, you see how much more physical they get yearly, um, and that's a credit to him and also the work they put in. Um, but, you know, those guys – those guys are, are capable. Even even the bottom of the order, uh, on base percentage guys and Alvarez and Wilkerson. If you decide you just want to challenge them with fastballs, both of them are capable of hitting the ball out of the park. So we feel like we can put seven guys in there who are capable of hitting ten plus home runs, and then guys at the bottom that can also hit a double or sneak a couple over. Um, so that's a good feeling to have. And uh, they were big ones. So you know, we, Alberto really hadn't got going yet. Coming off that ham eight, Johnny's got that big power. Um, you know, Stokely's get, finally hit his first one. So a bulk of them have come by, you know, Horvath, Honeycutt, and uh, Vandy. But we're going to hit a lot more um, from some of those other guys. So I'm really excited about that because you're never out of a game. That's what I tell our guys. If you got that power and you got that speed, if you do happen to have a bad inning and you go down 7 nothing, just keep playing 27 outs and some metal bats, you'll be back in the game before you blink. One of the really interesting things, looking at the the Diamond Heels continuing to have a high base on ball to K ratio, and then taking the the opportunity to steal second once they once they walk. Yeah, can you talk about how setting the table um, is is important for the for the Diamond Heels? Yeah, yeah. I was giving Vance a hard time. I was like, man, how many 
feel like we start the game with one, two, three outs lately. We need to we need to get that on base percentage a little bit higher with you and Mac, if, especially if you're leading off the inning. A home run is great, but let's be smart and let's make sure we understand that a walk is a double for you guys. Because if Mac or, or Vance get to first base, there's a pretty good chance they're going to steal second base. And I also think they're very capable of stealing third. It's a little harder than it used to be with teams playing shift because they can hold you a little bit more, but we've got to get better still in the third and we'll have even more stolen bases. But that's something we work hard on is controlling the strike zone. Now with the track, man, the umpires are being held more accountable. Um, so we tell our guys, great hitters hit mistakes. And if you're going out of, you know, hit, hitting pitchers pitches, it ain't going to work and you're not going to walk. And, and great hitters also walk. So if we can continue to walk, and I've also been impressed with our hit by pitches. Like our guys are tough. They're going to stay in there. And if you're, you know, you want to go in, you better dot it or we'll just take the hit by pitch and that'll be a single as well. Coach, let me ask you about um, Jackson Vanderbreak. I, I asked him, and I found this interesting. I asked him last week about going from the wood bat to the metal bats. And when you're hitting with wood, obviously you better hit it center <laughs> or, or you're going to saw it off. Do you think that's had something to do? Obviously, it's had something to do with his power numbers. He didn't have them. Um, back home, but do you think that's made him a better hitter? Maybe, you know, that's probably accurate because you, you know, that, that wooden bat, you got to find that center. Um, the room for error is much less. And I noticed that, uh, especially when he got back, you know, number one, he had gotten stronger cause he had been here, you know, and I played at a junior college, you know, that's, it's not as bad strength and conditioning. You just, you just don't have as much at your access. And he's older, but man, I noticed the bat speed. I was like, man, he's 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 starting to to really get the bat through the zone. The ball was jumping off, and uh, you know, Jackson has struggled with with really good sliders, like anybody. You know, that's right. That's a good hitter. You know, you got to learn. He's learned to lay off the balls. And what I've been most happy with him about is how he's hit some home runs off breaking balls. They haven't just been fastball mistakes, but the home run, the second home run he hit against their starter who was good yesterday. I was like, man, this dude's rolling out there on Sunday, touching 95. And, and Stony Brook hadn't even won a game. Welcome to college baseball. And he's a freshman. And he had that big home run on a curveball. So, yeah, but I, I think it does. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it only helps him. Yeah, I thought – I told him, I said, he's an old soul with his walk-up song out there. And those young folks didn't even know what I was talking about, vinyl records. It was Yeah, kinda, they had no idea. I know. It's like, oh, my God. But l let me ask you about Tomas Frick. Um, obviously, he's, I mean, 388, he, he's teeing off at times. How do you manage him not running him into the ground, p catching every game? I know you put him at DH over the weekend. Um, he's caught a ton of baseball. You've got two good options there. As a head coach, how do you manage that for him and keep him hot? Yeah, you know, he's one of our best hitters, so he's got to be in the lineup. So you just have to look at your lineup and say, okay, we got five games this week. Tomas may need to catch four for us to have the success we want. What is the most strategic one for him not to catch? And uh, sometimes it may be two. Um, but we talked about this. As you start getting older, and we talked about this with Jacob Stallings, we talked about this with Mark Flurry. Um, his freshman year, he got worn down, but he's, you know, 19. Well, now, you know, he's 21, 22. You should be stronger. You want to play in the big leagues. You want to play in the minor leagues. It's a lot harder. You take care of your body, you shouldn't get worn down. And I stay on these guys about it all the time. Sometimes we're our own reason we get worn down. You're not getting your sleep. You're not eating good. You're not staying strong. And uh, Tomas agrees with that. He feels like he's in better shape. He feels like he's stronger. He feels like he can catch every game, but I'm not – I caught um, – I know what it's like to catch every game, and I know, uh, you know, you want that bat speed to be there the whole year. So we'll have some games. The trick in then is if you DH Frick, you know, and Alberto, you know Alberto is a matter of time before he gets going. Um, you got to you gotta figure out who's going to play where. Um, but it is what it is, and it's a good problem to have. I was talking to our guys yesterday. I was like, we've got some really good depth. We've got some really good players that don't start the game in the lineup, and that's that's a good thing, and that can really help us be successful. But boy, we're just going to have to do it. We're going to have to catch a game this week for sure. Yeah, the five games in, in six days or seven days or whatever it is every week is tough. And you know you're going to get a doubleheader somewhere. Yeah. I'll be absolutely. shocked. I mean, somebody, some way, shape, or form, we'll get a doubleheader. Probably the opening weekend against Virginia and ACC. Like you said, good, good – uh, 
good problem to have with Grants back there. Let, let me stay with Frick right t- one more time before I kick it over to Matt. It, catching and knowing the strike zone and understanding whatever umpires is behind him doing, how does that impact his hitting? I mean, it's got to help. Oh, it, no, no question about it. Um, and I've always thought, you know, I was a catcher. I wasn't a pitcher. But I always thought catchers – make good pitching coaches too because you you deal with pitchers all the time and you're working with them and you call a game eventually um and that's really helped him two things that have helped him offensively is number one he's really bought in to what coach where's bicky's been talking to him about and also his approach um because at times frick had struggled against left-handed pitchers and we've been really talking to him like he sees the ball so well like you got to work even harder against lefties to stay up the middle. If you happen to hit one out, great. Um, so it's all approach for him right now because his swing is good, he's strong, and he's got power. So he just got to continue to stay with his approach. But it helps because any catcher is going to think along with the pitcher. Um, sometimes it can be a chess match. If a guy's got that nasty stuff, you're looking for one pitch. And if you get it, you got to do some damage. Coach Forbes, um Post game on Sunday, you mentioned that seemed, the club seemed a little lackadaisical uh, down the stretch on Saturday, giving away at bats, then having three errors. Can you talk about how you how you monitor the leadership on the team, and then when you decide that if you have to jump in and jump on them, or <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm not. A, I've learned yelling it, it doesn't accomplish a lot. Um, talking in the right tone is going to send a better message. I'm big on, you know, never tell our guys, you know, we're never going to embarrass you. That's just not the way we are here. We're going to hold you accountable. I'm going to hold you accountable as a team. And our guys know, like, you know, what I remind them of is this game, you, know, you played a certain way when you played North Carolina and you played 27 outs. Um, you know, I don't care if you're frustrated. I don't care if you're over four. You're not going to carry it out there with you. And I wouldn't say we were lackadaisical. I just thought, you know, they were mad at themselves. Um, it's more learning to when you made that mistake, just just flush it and move on. That's what I told Max, what I told Colby, that's what I told Vandy. Not many games that those guys each have made a throwing error. Um, but more, more I, I got on more about, you know, just having a lull with our approach because our approach is good. And we take a lot of pride in it. We want to suffocate the, off, the other team, the other team's pitching. Um, we want them to have to use every single pitcher they have in that bullpen. I explained to them, hey, if it's it's nine nothing, I treat it like it's three nothing. So you need to do the same. Um, and they got the message, and we've got good leaders. I don't I don't have to do much with this team. We've got a we've got a good locker room. Yeah. Well, looking around the ACC right now, three teams are perfect on the season: uh, Wake's thirteen and zero, State's twelve and zero, and now Virginia's coming in undefeated on an eleven game winning streak. How excited are you and the team to to get the ACC slate running? Yeah, I mean it's 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 the best part and it's the hardest part, and that's what makes it enjoyable. Everybody's good, um, you know, and you've got to play well, and you have to do the little things to win games in the ACC. And that's why I'm glad that we've uh, we've played in a tough environment like East Carolina. Um, we played some teams that I feel like have had some solid pitching, some different looks, some different lineups. I think that's going to help us when we get into league play. Um, you know, I don't think we'll play anybody on the road with with a tougher environment than it was in Greenville, which is good for us. Um, and I'm excited. Our guys are excited because uh, league play, man, it's a new season. You know, if we were undefeated, great. If we if we're not, which we're not, no big deal. It's, it's start. It's basically like you're starting a new season. That is head coach, North Carolina baseball, Scott Forbes. Carolina with a couple midweek games. Western Carolina, Tuesday at 4. Penn State coming down from the Big Ten. Chapel Hill, 4 o'clock on Wednesday. Coach Forbes, we really appreciate you taking time to do this every week. It's always fun to talk some Carolina baseball. Yeah, absolutely. And let's get our – we got to pull for our hoops team. Some big yeah. win. Big win. They're going to get them. Feel good about it. They got some work to get done, and uh, that starts as well on Wednesday for North Carolina basketball. I can relate to that. So they're going, they'll get it done. <laughs> Appreciate it, Scott. All right, guys. Y'all have a great week. Thanks. You too. Thank, Thank you. you.